Hey guys, so as you all know, we expect the solar cells to produce uh, uh, electricity, you know, convert uh, sunlight into electricity for a long period of time. So for example, usually you assume that these panels will work for uh, 25 years or even more than that. But I want to discuss this, uh, this special issue, which is of light induced uh, degradation. And it's, uh, it's of special concern for this uh, amorphous silicon uh, kind of solar cells. So thin film solar cells which are made out of uh, amorphous silicon. So when you make these solar cells out of uh, amorphous silicon, what is often observed is that uh, if you expose them to sunlight, you know, if you just make these cells and expose them to sunlight, you get a certain efficiency. In this case, an efficiency of 8.5%. Uh, but as you keep on uh, keep it exposed to light, the efficiency it starts uh, degrading, and you can see that uh, you know just in a period of five hours, the efficiency has dropped from uh, eight point five to you know close to seven point uh, you know close to uh, six point eight percent. And if you keep on exposing it to light even more, the efficiency, it starts to degrade. Thankfully, it, uh, the rate of degradation slows down, but nonetheless, it's still degrading. And, uh, you know, it reduces uh, substantially as compared to what you started at, at uh, t equal to zero. Now, even more interestingly, what people have observed is now if you take this uh, solar cell, and uh, anneal it or bake it for a couple of hours. So, you know, you put it uh, in a chamber which has a temperature, let's say, equal to 150 uh, degrees centigrade. And uh, then you take it out and again uh, expose it to sunlight, you know, expose it to sun and measure its efficiency. So miraculously what occurs is that the efficiency it recovers back, you know, you get part of the efficiency that you lost back and uh, you again have higher efficiency. But unfortunately, again, when you expose it to light uh, again, you know, it starts to degrade again and the efficiency starts to fall. If uh, again, you expose uh, it to, uh, or you anneal it again, uh, this uh, efficiency rises up and uh, it starts to fall again if you keep on exposing it to light. So you get the idea that, uh, you know, essentially the efficiency degrades if you expose it to light. It improves if you anneal it or, you know, if you subject this uh, solar cell to this uh, high temperature. And overall, usually your efficiency, it can degrade very easily to uh, around 30% uh, or, uh, or the efficiency can degrade by 30%. You know, your efficiency can degrade by 30% of what you started uh, from. And it starts to stabilize after a while and, uh, you know, the rate of uh, decrease uh, or the rate of this uh, degradation slows down and uh, it reaches a stable stage, uh, uh, stable state after some time. But nonetheless, you degrade, uh, you know, you're operating at efficiency which is 30% lower than what you started at when the cell just uh, came out uh, from the factory. In fact, many of these uh, these solar lines they measure you know they measure these cells when after they are uh, manufactured for the purpose of binning them into different categories, and they observe that as soon as you know they measure this cell, they it starts to degrade. So again, that does not uh, board very well with uh, what I said earlier that these things uh, you know need to work uh, uh, for more than twenty five years. But it's not that, you know, when people, uh, you know, started uh, when this amorphous silicon uh, became uh, really hot uh, and people were selling these, uh, a lot of these solar panels uh, back in, uh, uh, back in 2008 or 2009 kind of fine frame. It was not that they, you know, they, they just discovered about this uh, after they started manufacturing these cells. In fact, this phenomena is uh, way well known for the case of amorphous silicon. It was uh, discovered all the way back in uh, 1977 by uh, these two uh, bright, uh, uh, at that time, young scientists, uh, Stabler and uh, Vronsky, who used to work at uh, RCA labs at that time. And what they observed was uh, they measured uh, the conductivity so they measured the conductivity of this amorphous silicon and they measured it uh, you know right uh, uh, after it was made and they exposed it to light uh, for some time and what they saw was that the conductivity it uh, fell to 
a much lower level after you after you expose uh, it to light so this this phenomenon of degradation of this amorphous silicon has been uh, uh, known for uh, for uh, you know quite some time and people have proposed uh, different uh, theories for it so um, you know as is with this uh, degradation or these reliability kind of uh, phenomena people uh, propose different models and they're always uh, you know, you can be assured that there'll be more than one uh, competing models to explain the observed uh, experimental behavior so the first of these uh, models which is uh, used to explain this uh, degradation is uh, what is called as the hydrogen bond switching model the hydrogen bond uh, switching model and this was uh, proposed uh, it was one of the earliest models to explain this uh, degradation so it's uh, more widely accepted as well and the way this uh, model tries to explain this uh, degradation is that it says that uh, suppose you have this amorphous material amorphous silicon in this case so you have these uh, you know you have these silicon atoms and they are bonded to each other now what happens when you shine light on this material so when you shine uh, shine light on this material you generate these uh, electron and hole pairs which are generated uh, throughout the uh, throughout the bulk of this uh, absorbing material and now these electron and hole pairs they can essentially either get collected they can uh, recombine and they can release out uh, uh, a photon uh, out uh, from the system so they can uh, radiatively recombine more commonly they essentially they can recombine and they can give away this energy to the lattice itself so they can recombine and they can ener give away this energy to the lattice now if such a electron and hole pair it recombines very close to this uh, bond which is uh, there between these two silicon atoms it can essentially give out that energy to this bond and that may result in the breaking of uh, this bond so that's how essentially you you break this bond because uh, you get uh, sufficient energy from this recombination of this electron and hole and uh, that essentially creates that essentially uh, leads to creation of the dangling bond on each of these uh, silicon atoms. Now what this model says is that now this uh, this bond is essentially switched by hydrogen. So essentially what, uh, what happens is that this hydrogen which is uh, uh, inadvert which is you know almost almost always present uh, in this uh, amorphous silicon material it opportunities opportunistically comes in and it bonds with uh, one of these uh, one of these uh, silicon atoms but this uh, other bond on the other silicon atom is essentially still uh, still unsatisfied so it results in creation of this dangling bond on one of the silicon atoms but overall this bond between the silicon uh, these two silicon atoms is essentially switched by this uh, hydrogen uh, hydrogen molecule so this is one way to explain you know how this uh, uh, how this degradation occurs it occurs because as you shine light your density of these uh, dangling bond it uh, increases because uh, because of the recombination of these electron and hole pairs which are generated uh, because you shine light they result in breaking of these bonds and it results in creation of these uh, dangling bond states so another model which can uh, explain the creation of these uh, dangling bond uh, states uh, as well is uh, this hydrogen uh, collision model and this is a model which has been uh, recently uh, become uh, which has recently become uh, more popular to explain this uh, phenomena and the way it says that these dangling bonds are created it says that you have this amorphous material so you have a lot of these uh, silicon atoms which are uh, you know which are bonded to hydrogen anyway because you know not all the all the bonds in an amorphous material are not uh, satisfied with other silicon atoms you have a lot of these silicon atoms which are bond uh, which are bonded uh, with the hydrogen so now what happens is that when you shine light it results uh, it results uh, in the breaking of these bonds so what uh, the picture that results is that uh, it creates uh, these uh, dangling bonds on uh, each of these uh, silicon atoms and this hydrogen which is uh, subsequently set free or these hydrogen uh, atoms which are subsequently set free because uh, they are now released they essentially uh, they essentially you know go and form a metastable state uh, somewhere uh, within the lattice as well so these two models are you know often uh, frequently uh, used to explain uh, this uh, phenomenon